I had never really thought about that. You know, as a healer, you are just human. And healers, if they're having a bad day or transmitting negative energy, I'm welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host. Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections. I am here with Leticia Ferrer Rivera. Leticia, how are we doing today? What's up? Very good. Good morning, and thank you for having me with you today. This is an honor. It's it's an honor to have you here. Um, it's really a pleasure. You wear a lot of hats. We'll dive into it. Um, but ultimately, you're a psychic, you're a healer, you're a dancer, you you do everything. Um, and this is something I'm very interested in, but not very knowledgeable on. So I'll learn a lot today. And if we can start, can you can you give us a bird's eye view of exactly what you do? You know, what is a psychic? What is a healer? Uh, let's get into that. Sure. Let's go into the metaphysical area. Um, so I um, I have been doing dream interpretation since I was seven years of age. I will dream with the with the contrary person, with the opposite person, and the other person is the one that will have the event going on. Or, you know, like I will be doing like a clairvoyant dream. I will say I will have it, and I will tell, hey, I just dream with this. For example, I dream one time that my uh, my mother was going to have her car stolen from a shopping mall, and it was my aunt, her sister. So I will usually dream with the opposite person than what the event was going to happen to. So, and then I grew up with um, a grandma who loved quartz and crystals. And from both sides of my family, I have mediumship and witches and psychic heritage. Um, from especially from the Mediterranean side, I have a lot of heritage from Spain, from Barcelona, Spain, and that's where my mediumship and my witches heritage mostly come from. And then from my mother's side, I have more the mediumship side, um, and in a lot of intuition in both sides of the family. So, but for many years, you know how we hide in a closet and we are afraid to express ourselves because of the society patterns and stereotypes so i didn't i when i was doing uh full-time dance teaching and performing and all that i was still practicing and i became fully like initiated in the wicca uh religion and i became a high priestess eventually but I was still hiding because I was afraid of people telling me, hey, you know, uh, this is wrong, this is evil, you know how it is. So I kept it for myself for a very long time. And recently, um, in 2017, after I participated in a beauty pageant, um, I was Mrs. New York Petite 2017. I came back and I said, you know what? The dancing business is not going the way I want to. And so I am going to explore taking out of the closet and showing publicly my other side, my metaphysical side. And I said to my husband, this is going to be risky, but I'm going to give it a try. And I started doing readings um, for commercial lines, you know, psychic lines and one of those 800 lines and all, start, all of that. And, and I said, you know what? I want my own stuff because I wasn't happy um, reading for the commercial line, I felt like it was kind of scripted and too controlling and it was not truthful in my opinion. So I wanted something truthful that I could help people with. And that's when Dancing Crowns, my business, 
um, was born. You know, I decided to incorporate. I already had the business name before that, mm. but I changed the logo from dancing and drumming and all that to the psychic logo with the tarot cards and all that now. So, <laughs> and the crystals, of course. So that's kind of like a background of who I am. But I, in the metaphysical world, I specialize more in crystal healing. I have three certifications on that, plus my own experience with crystals. I am a tarot designer and uh, and I am also a psychic. So I don't only read the tarot cards and the symbols of the cards, but I also use my intuition in the readings. And I am uh, I am great with pendulum. I, I love pendulum and I'm about to um, hopefully teach a course in 2021 with pendulum. I use pendulum from the very basic yes or no answers all the way to healing and reaching out to the archangels realm and in many, many ways. Um, and, you know, I design also jewelry because that's a way for me to reach out for people who prefer the self crystal healing way instead of um, going into a session with me where I position the crystals on them and all that, they can continue to do some self crystal healing through my jewelry. Um, I do handmade jewelry. I do have a high end piece of jewelry that I designed this year. So, you know, it's, yeah, like you said, many hats, but it's all connected, um, all connected to either crystal healing or the psychic um, area, most of it. Yeah, it's it's all connected. Crystal healing, psychic area, and ultimately a family that was already doing these kind of things. So you were exposed at a young age. I'm curious when it comes to being, you know, a, a healer, you know, the metaphysical realm, is it something that you can learn? Are you born with it? Um, how does that work? Are you born with something special that other people don't have? Or is it something that can be taught? I think it's both. Um, I think that everyone has a healer in them, but not everyone has go deep within in order to discover that healing ability. Um, the healing ability can be in different ways. There are out there shamans that works more with herbs, um, maybe, you know, with um, other things, you know, like teas, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but in my case, I went into the direction of using crystals for healing. Um, so also, I will say that the natural ability helps, but me being a former dance teacher, I usually, if I'm going to teach someone to heal, for example, just maybe to answer this question in a better way, I will say that I prefer someone who did not come with the natural ability, but that I actually train in a very well uh, way, you know, like very structured and learning very good than someone who comes with ability and it's all over the place and don't know where to start or it's not disciplined enough because that can create unbalance. And we as healers have to be as much balanced as possible mm -hmm. um, and as much, you know, maintaining, have a lot of self-maintenance in order for not transmitting negative energy to the person that is receiving the healing. So it all depends on the situation and the individual. I think we all have a healer if we find it in us. But yes, natural ability um, also helps a lot um, to, to um, learn faster probably or catch something by intuition that probably the person that does not have that intuition developed yet will maybe not see, you know, but it's not impossible. Um, if, if, if someone wants to learn it, they can learn it and they can work through meditation and grounding and all that to find that healer in them. It might take longer than someone that already came with that. Um, but but it's not something that someone cannot do. I do not believe on stopping someone from doing something that they would like to do just because they think they don't have the ability. 
Yeah, it, it sounds like if we dedicate ourselves, we can at the very least learn and hone that ability. I, I had never really thought about that. You know, a, as a healer, you are just human. And healers, if they're having a bad day or transmitting negative energy, I'm okay. Um, let me try. I'll re ask the question. Um, yes. we were talking about okay, I'm all, I'm all thrown off guard. That that hasn't happened before. That's interesting, like a scratching LP. Well, let me tell you, I smudged the area to make sure we were safe <laughs> before that. <laughs> so hopefully there's nobody playing games with us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, Leticia, we are back. We had some technical difficulties on the Zoom, but I think we're good to go. Um, yeah, so as a healer, you know, your your energy is important. Ultimately, if someone comes in with a you know in a bad mood or had a negative day, it's very easy to transfer that negative energy, right? And ultimately, give a bad reading. How does that happen? Happen often? Is there ways to avoid that? That that seems like something that could be really tricky um, well, in the process. It can be. Um is not sometimes the perfect day for the healer, but I have my rules. Um, my The people who, for example, lives with me, my daughter, my husband, um, they know, and even the cats, they kind of feel, they know when I'm going to have a healing session that day, that it doesn't matter what happened. I need to be in peace since the very moment that I wake up. And at least give me a break until the um, the healing session passed. If there is something that we need to talk about that is not going to be a comfortable conversation. And I like to meditate. I like to, uh, grounding is very important because grounding, you know, cleans the aura, the energy. I have a routine. Um, so at least the day of the healing is very important that healer, cleans themselves, prepare mentally and physically and eat, you know, clean and well before that session in order to minimize any negative impact or, you know, banish any negative impact in the person receiving the healing because they will feel it. That's, you know, the most. <laughs> mm. They will feel it and that's not a good thing. So, you know, in my experience, I've been lucky that I've been, um, very on point with that and i always you know have great reviews from my clients but i am very very careful extremely careful on that um so it's it is um it is a very disciplined area yeah um now let's imagine i i'm showing up for a crystal healing or anyone listening maybe wants to to come in what does the process look like? Is there certain kinds of crystals based on male, female? Is there any introductory so you know what to do? I mean, what, what does the process look like the first time? It all depends on the person. I, um, if it's just a general cleansing of your energy field and balancing the chakras, it will be the same process for everybody. Mm. Um, and it will be probably a shorter session that if I am trying to remove something. So I have been doing both. I had someone really, really close to me that was my, <laughs> actually my first client as a crystal healer. And I was working with a cancer patient back then, you know, that close someone um, was uh, having esophageal cancer, which is very aggressive. And this person at this point um, did not have those many uh, side effects during treatment. I did the healing before that person started the treatment. I did not want to interfere during and then i do like a final cleansing after the treatment is over after surgery after everything is done i do you know one more session um just like uh closing the the cleansing right 
And then I have customers who just wanted to feel more balanced and relaxed, you know, and have like a general cleansing. And I have been doing both. So um, it all depends on what do you answer in the questionnaire or when I when you contact me for creating the appointment, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. And then we go from there. I do have a record for my for my clients. I have, you know, for the ones that require more uh, a special touch, like for mm-hmm. example, the cancer patient. If we talk about that, then I have, you know, my my notes, and it's a longer questionnaire. If the person wants to work with something specific. Then if it's just a general cleansing and balancing moment, then I don't need you to answer too many questions. It's just that. That's what you're asking for. And we're going to make it more simple. Uh, But, you know, there are some waivers. I have insurance as well. And we want to make sure that we tell the people that it's just a mess of physical and holistic choice. And I am not a doctor. I don't predict outcomes for health and I you know I do not do it for substituting any medical treatment it's just a complementary uh, choice the person has but not for replacing the doctors or practitioners treatment or nothing like that right so don't no one at home don't go and replace everything you're doing that does work um with something like this this is something complementary that will make things work better maybe before a treatment after a treatment is can it be used for pretty much anything you know um trauma weight loss there's all sorts of things that we're trying to to do you know get over x traumas lose weight eat healthier be more positive um it's a whole new year so is there a specific kind of thing that it works you know healing works best for or can we attribute it to any of the things in life so crystal healing can work for physical for mental and for spiritual and um to different levels of uh you know healing um if we are treating something physical for example my cancer patient i had Mm -hmm. um it is a different uh, way of seeing it. And then if we are working with something spiritual, like we are not feeling well, um, we are going through a depression, we want to feel better. So we work, you know, with different crystals than something physical or on our, or an illness. Um, however, it all comes to intention and energy you know this i am part even though i'm using crystals i am part of what is called the group in general as a energy healer we are Mm -hmm. energy healers because we use the crystals instead of me using only for example reiki i'm not a reiki practitioner but just to give you an example instead of just using a symbol of reiki or something like that i am actually getting assistance from the crystals for using their energy instead of my energy only. So I use my energy, but I also use the energy of the crystals as a help for healing that person. So so it is actually helping me as a healer to save some energy because we are combining crystal and human energy into the healing. Um, And it all depends, again, if it's something physical or something emotional the crystals will be different yes there is a bunch of list of crystals that i use for each purpose and um if the person has a combination then we might use different sessions for that because i don't like to um i don't like to try combining everything in one session if it's something complicated i prefer to have different sessions for that so we can um, treat, if I may use that word, um, a specific um, illness or a specific um, emotional issues or, um, you know, mental issues, you know, but again, uh, just something as a holistic and um, 
in metaphysical spiritual practice because just like a chaplain, if you go to a church and talk to a chaplain or a minister um, for something that you don't feel right, um, in the closer example, if you go to confession in the Catholic Church and you go confess your sins to the priest, it makes you feel better mentally, right? And sometimes that mental state will help us physically because it's a weight that we discard from our life. We, we discard that stress out of us because we were able to talk to someone about it. It is a, a very similar way in the crystal healing. We apply the crystal, we use the crystal um, for, for the healing side, and it relieves the person, you know, at a spiritual level, at a mental level, and that trans for to the physical body too because a lot of times we get ill or sick because our mental state or our uh, spirit our soul because we are a soul with skin um is not right it's having a negative charge so by by using the crystals it is a similar effect that probably going talking to to a catholic priest and confess your sins in the church if I can compare it with something. Yeah. Um, kind of what I'm hearing here is it is a, it's a muscle and you need to work it um, in the fact that um, going and confessing your sins or having a healing, it's going to release that weight for some time and it's going to be very helpful. But tell me if I'm wrong, it seems like something that you want to be focusing on healing your mind at all times and doing it regularly because like a muscle um you get better at and better at you know basically being stronger and getting rid of those traumas or getting rid of those issues um it, i mean is that is that right is it the kind of thing that someone shows up once a year do clients show up regularly to to cleanse their minds or um, I'm just kind of making inferences because I've never been. Depending on the case, if it's something that we have to work harder on, for example, um, with my cancer patient, I did three sessions before treatment and one session after the treatment and surgery and everything and recuperation was over. Um, with someone just that having that cleansing and balancing of the chakras, right? Um, it will be probably once, twice a year, maybe three times a year would be the ideal for me. But if the person wants to do it once a year and they feel they are okay with that, then I'm fine with, you know, as long as the person feel okay with one session a year, then I go with what they want. Now, that's why I also designed the crystal jewelry. For example, what I have on, I, I made this necklace. Yes. And this is why it's important that the person either get some crystal to carry in their purse, in the little bags. Um, let me show you real quick. I have, um, for example, the leather deer bags. And they all have, you know, like crystals inside with a specific intention. So if the person feel that they need protection, then protection crystals is going to have inside. If the person is trying to overcome a big trauma in their life, then I will use, for example, a roto, uh, a roto night. Uh, rhodonites, uh, rose quartz, you know, those are crystals that help someone to overcome Big traumas, for example, amethyst is a master healer, um, and I use amethyst in many different ways. This is like the amethyst is like the crystal for everything. The crystal that you find in the pharmacy, <laughs> and you cure everything with it. Um, so I think I put amethyst in every single um, bag in a different way because this one is a druzy, is a druzy chunk, um, but I use also the polished stone balls for the bags. Um, if it's the jewelry, I might use the point or for example, my, my pagan rosary that I designed this year. So it has the archangels, sigils in the charms. It has the triple moon, the sun, and it has a cross with a pentacle in the center. Um, 
crosses are, you know, crosses, with, these are actually nails. So a lot of the pagan religions, as well as the Catholic people use nails for different reasons, um, or they are a characteristic of that, you know, spiritual path. So it is very important to continue the use of crystals. Let me um, just pull out a couple of crystals from the back. So this sure. is a black amethyst point that came out of the bag, the deer leather bag. This is the tourmaline uh, for protection. These are both protective uh, crystals. Um, this one right here is um, lepidolite, and that one is more for self-love and also intuition, their eye, um, pyrite, it's like a gold tone, and that one is for attracting prosperity money. So, you know, de depending on what the person wants, I might also recommend keep using crystals for what I call self-crystal healing and crystal comforting, because that, that way you can continue your healing process without having to come every day for a crystal healing session. That will be impossible. Mm -hmm. um, there are other ways, for example, with uh, palm stone that you can keep in your desk, uh, in your work area. I am a big fan of having crystals in my office, um, you know, in my work area, as well as my house, decorating with crystals. It, it is also a great way to maintain the energy around. You can see I have many right behind me in my altar. Um, but palm stones are a great way to have like a stress ball Mm -hmm. um, during the day, and these are great tools for meditation practices, for grounding, depending on the on the crystal that you use. Um, let me give you uh, give you another example of palm stones. This is an ocean jasper, and it's a smaller size. And this is a polychrome jasper, and it's kind of bigger. Um, so it all depends on. What do you need and what do you want to work with? Um, there are also other items with shapes like moon, for example. You can charge this under the moon and you can use it um, for meditation or trying to connect with the moon goddess or the moon energy, you know, so, um, or you can have it just as decoration. So it all depends on the need of the person. To me, it's important that after that crystal healing session, if the person can carry either a piece of jewelry that continue help them, or if they can get a little crystal bag or a piece of crystal, you know, with a decoration, pretty decoration shape or something that they can continue working with the healing, that is very important because that's not going to stay only in the healing session, but that they are going to continue work on that. And sometimes the crystal is also a reminder for that person that they still need to work on that area because it's not just about going to the healing session and it's over, but it's also something that sometimes take a long time. And by looking at that crystal or that little polished tumbles or raw tumbles, it is a reminder for that person of that continual um, work that you mm. that we all need to do because I'm including myself. I'm not perfect. You know, yes, I am a healer. I have my natural abilities, but I also have to apply crystal healing for myself too. Um, I have to live what I preach, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm going to be asking you offline a little bit about this because – I, I've meditated mostly daily for years now, and I'm at the point where I have to say the word mostly because my practice, you know, the sessions have gotten shorter. Sometimes I skip my meditation practice, and I almost feel like I need something, you know, if I had crystals or something to bring that mood back and make the experience better. Maybe I wouldn't get bored with the ritual of meditating daily. So uh, I think that's something we can talk about offline. There's so much to talk about. 
so I just kind of want to touch on, um, you know, a couple of the additional things briefly because I know, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Is it tarot or is it tarot? You can say tarot. You can say tarot, depending on the area of the planet that you are coming from. <laughs> they are both correct, actually. Um, I say tarot. Um, but a lot of people say tarot, and that's perfectly correct as well. Um, so tarot is initially a card game that eventually, it was initiated in Europe, uh, France, Italy areas, and eventually it came uh, a way of divination, and it is also a collection um, item. So a lot of people collect uh, tarot cards. Once you have your first tarot deck, it is impossible not to buy 20, 40, 200 of them. <laughs> um, they are all um, either based on the famous uh, Wade Smith or Rider Wade, which is the most commercial one and, and common one that everybody sees in the market. Or they are based on the um, Tarot de Marseille, which is the French uh, style of Tarot. And it is a different, the difference is that in the minor arcanas, major arcanas are usually the moon, the sun, the hermit, um, you know, uh, death, for example, death is a major arcana, the tower, those are major arcanas. And then we have the suits that have cups, coins, or in this case, pentacles, um, swords, wands. Those are the other minor arcanas. Um, and within the minor arcanas, we also have the royalty people that I call it like that, which is the court cards, which is the queen, the king, the page, you know, the knight. Um, so those are court cards. So we have a series of sections is 78 cards because if it's not 78 cards then it becomes an oracle deck which is something different um they're both for divination but oracles do not have a specific number of cards and the tarot is 78 cards um and then you know within the within the the minor arcanas then we have the ace of cups the five of pentacles the seven of swords you know you name it it's all one to ten um, and they all have a specific symbols. Um, for example, if we take the major arcana in the tarot that I am designing, which is Secrets of Paradise Tarot, that it's going to be published 2021, hopefully beginning 2021, that's my hope. Um, I'm still working with my illustrator in Uruguay. She lives in Uruguay, Laura Bello. Um, and for example, in my deck, I substitute the devil for a couple dancing tango in Uruguay, and it's called Temptations. Because the image, the Christian image of the devil is at the end of the day going to try to resist temptation um, in life. Temptation from just eating a small candy that you should not be eating all the way to something bigger that you're not supposed to do and you go ahead and do it. Or how do you resist that temptation? Or how do you go ahead and, and do not resist it at all and go for the temptation anyway? So that's why I substitute the image of the devil for a tango dancing in Uruguay and call it temptation. So that's just one example of one of the major arcanas. Um, for, the, for a minor arcana example, this is the three of swords. In my deck, if you notice, it's a carnival mask made of coconut, and it has three horns in it. And the three of swords is, is usually a heart with three swords in it, like a tr tr uh, like a traitor or maybe an, uh, someone who was not faithful to you, and there is a third party involved in a relationship. You know, so instead of having a husband and wife, there is a third person there. So it is like a, like a meaning like that, similar. So I decided to use a mask because this mask is what that person who has been on Facebook to the other person use when it's in front of that person because 
um, you know, how in reality of life, you know, when you are cheating in someone, and it doesn't have to be a relationship, it can be at work, it can be um, in any scenario, even, even to yourself, you are trying to go, for example, in a diet for losing weight or being healthier, and you are using your own math, sometimes you are fooling yourself because you are not really following what you need to follow in order to get healthier. So, um, so uh, you are um, being unfaithful to your own self sometimes, right? So that's why I substitute the, the swords mm. by a mask with horns because we are not being truthful, right? Um, so those right. are just a couple of examples on um, on my tarot, you know, and they are all um, in historical places in the Caribbean and Latin America. Um, is the first tarot that has illustrations from the Caribbean and Latin America, and it is the first tarot that also has images. Let me look for one real quick. Um, that also has images from the Tainos, which are the native. Puerto Rican people um, exposing a div divination method. Um, and they are now in a human shape because usually they are what is called a semi, like a rock figure. But we humanized the goddesses and the gods in order to make them, um, you know, to, to be able to use them in the divination method. So my method, my tarot is following a little bit of rider weight, which is more like the English. Um, and um, I will say the most common way because there are people in the minor arcana. For example, the two of cups has people in it, right? All my cards have people in it. The tarot de Marcel do not have people in the minor arcana. It's just either three swords only or seven cups only you know no people in the in the minor arcanas mine has people in it so i'm right i'm, I'm following more the pattern of the rider weight in that case um so yeah this is what i've been doing mostly this year with tarot but i also do read i'm a psychic i don't only go by the by the symbolism of the cards but also with my intuition and that has also helped me a lot in developing my own tarot because I don't only go by the symbolism of the cards in the right way, but I have also created other symbolism in my own tarot that has been coming through messages from my spirit guides and using my own intuition as well. Wow. Yeah. Um. So one of its kind brand new tarot deck that you said it's coming out soon you're still working on the illustrations it's it's the first of its kind ever created right yes um and there there is never in the history of the tarot that someone has put a taino goddess or god in the tarot cards Mm -hmm. um, there are no illustrations from the Caribbean historical places or places in Latin America. Um, so I am using those historical places as the background um, for, for that. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I started this during the pandemic, when the pandemic or, uh, started the first time, the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um that's when i started working on the tarot and that's when i started working on the pagan rosary too they mm -hmm. were both projects going on at the same time now the pagan rosary was faster to work with and the tarot is a long-term project because we do between two to three cards per week depending on the complexity of each illustration um and i have to be very careful because i don't want my illustrator to get uh hurt you know her hand uh, drawing, um, it's a lot. So uh, yeah. even though there are digital images, she still do it, you know, with her hands. So we have to be very careful on how much work I give her workload, right? Um, so hopefully we are about to finish in beginning January. I'm ho I think that by the second week of January, we might have the complete tarot. And I am hoping to be able to print it and publish 
any time in February or March, but I will have to give you those news at a later time because I'm also trying to publish with a traditional house. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to go in my self-published direction. I'm trying to go into one of the bigger houses. Um, so I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully one of them um, can accept my proposal and I can publish with one of them. But I'm still going to print some of the decks because I did a Kickstarter uh, project and it, it, it actually went over the amount. Wow. So I will still have to uh, send some of the decks myself at the beginning and then, mm. you know, but I'm not going to publish publicly until I know if the house, if one of the houses um, can accept my proposal. Yeah, well, congratulations. Congratulations on a successful Kickstarter. Um, how do people keep in touch with you, whether it's to come in for a healing, for a reading, um, or to wait and be ready for when the deck goes, you know, mainstream and is available? What's the best ways to keep in touch? So my metaphysical boutique is online. Um, it's dancingcrownspsychic.com, dancingcrowns psychic.com that's my website and in there you can book a tarot reading with me you can book a uh, uh, long distance or in person crystal healing with me because i do both um you can also send me a message i have a blog and i just published today yesterday night i published the 12 tarot cards and the 12 crystals forecast for 2021 so you need to read that one um, to see what to expect next year and i did it in a global way um and uh, you can also buy a lot of crystals they are um from jewelry you know latimar jewelry um i have a lot of handmade jewelry uh my deck is for pre-order there you can pre-order secrets of paradise tarot either in the third edition, which is with the silver borders and include the bigger book. Or if you want just the regular edition with the booklet, you can pre-order that there. You can buy tons of crystals um, in there. I hand select my crystals, by the way. Um, so everything, you can find it in dancingcrownspsychic.com. But if you want to reach out to me in a faster way, like if you have a quick question to ask me or you want to ask me, at what time I am available for the booking, then you should use Messenger in Facebook. I am in LinkedIn. And I am also in Instagram as Dancing Crowns Tarot in Instagram. Um, so you can find me anywhere pretty much in the social media or through my website. Perfect. And I'll be following up. I've got some personal questions for you. I'm sure that other people have um, a lot of questions as well. And you're a you're ultimately a, a book of knowledge on the topic, so it would be great to dive deeper. Um, to close it out, I, I do want to do the rapid fire round because I love this section. Just simple, short answers, just to get, uh, ultimately get to know you a little bit better. Sounds good? Sounds good. Before you do that, I yes. wanted to remind people that I also speak Espanol. So I am bilingual. So if there is audience out there that would like readings in Spanish instead of English, I can definitely do that for you guys. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so mornings, do you, do you drink coffee or tea? I love coffee in the morning. Black, no sugar, no cream. Black, black coffee, no cream. Are, are you a morning person or are you a night owl? <laughs> That's a tough one because when I was a full-time dance teacher, I used to work from the midday all the way to 10, 11 p.m. So I used to be a night owl. And now that I do both, I have my daytime job and my psychic job or metaphysical job. I have to work both. Um, I prefer nights, to be honest with you. I am a, a, a person that enjoy the, the moonlight and the darkness, but but I had to force myself for years to be a morning person because otherwise I would have been miserable by now. So right now I'm kind of both, if I can say that. <laughs> I, I feel the same way sometimes. 
Do you do you have any guilty pleasures, whether it's food or dessert, something that you shouldn't uh, eat or shouldn't do, but you still love? Yes, um, I will say that I love during the holidays the Hispanic food, and that is really high calorie food, including what we call coquito, and that's like a eggnog, but it's made of uh, with coconut milk instead of eggs. Um, and oh my gosh, that is so sweet and awesome. It is my weakness so bad. <laughs> you you said you spend a lot of time on Facebook. Is Facebook your you know favorite social media platform? If someone were to want to get in touch, um, should they start on the Facebook or where should they find you to follow you and make a friend? I do prefer Facebook a lot because it's the more versatile of all social media, to be honest. Um, but my second favorite will be Instagram and my third favorite will be LinkedIn. Um, and those are the three that I have. I have a Twitter account, but I do not even go there. So don't try to find me in Twitter. Um, I'm not even going there right now. So yeah, in, uh, I would say number one, Facebook through Messenger. It will be the fastest way to find me. Love it. Love it. Um, to close out, if I were to want to take action today and maybe something at home, in my family, in my day-to-day -day life, maybe I'm working from home. I personally am, but maybe you're waking, working from home and you're not getting out as much. You're not a big winter fan. Um, is there anything that I can start today to ultimately kickstart the healing process and, and put me in a better position going forward? I will say um, that probably getting a piece of crystal that, that helps you grounding and at the same time do not make you depressed, do not ground too much, um, will help you start your day with more energy, you know, connecting with the energy of that crystal and then also, if you don't have a crystal with you, trying to reach up to your divine or your spiritual path, um, whatever it is, it can be that you are following just a philosophy like the Buddhism, or you are, for example, following a deeper religion like Wicca or Catholic or whatever your path is, Hinduism. You know, I think the divine in us is very important. It doesn't matter which spiritual path you find. Um, I, I do see a lot of lack of spirituality in the world today. And I think by being a more spiritual person, whatever path you find that is comfortable for you to follow will help you also um, to maintain those principles as a human being up in a higher level and will also help you being a better neighbor in the planet Earth because it's not only here in the States, but we have a lot of neighbors around the world. Um, and we should expand our mind, not to only think about our town or state that we live or the nation, but to also think about out of our country itself and think about who are our neighbors internationally and how better person I can be today mm. in the moment. Um, I think that's going to be a nice, um, great, uh, attracting great energy to your day at the beginning in the morning, thinking, you know, about others and how you can impact others throughout your day how can you work with yourself to become a better person and what type of spirituality I can bring to my life in order to keep reminding me about those principles to be a better person. I think that's the best way to start a day. Yeah, I think it's the best way as well. That That's what I'm going to be looking at today. How can I be a good neighbor? How can I um, ultimately love and take care of myself and put myself in the best position to help others? Um, and then it creates, it's like an ecosystem. If everybody were to do that, it expands outside of your community into your entire country, into um, your neighboring countries in the whole world. So this has been fun. Um, ultimately, wow, it, it's, it's a practice that I've always been interested in multiple practices really but i don't know much about so this has been really interesting for me and if if anybody's interested as well feel free to reach out it sounds like you're very open to 
have conversation in multiple languages with multiple kinds of people with multiple different scenarios. So there's a lot of people you can help. Uh, I appreciate you coming on and, and chatting with me today. Thank you. I do appreciate a lot that you had me today in your uh, uh, podcast and your show. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. I um, I wish you uh, you know a great success and that you have many many followers from here. You have a great um, a great uh, show, and I think that a lot of people should be listening to you because I can feel that great energy coming your uh, from you, and I can feel that you are very excited to do it. Uh, you know, like very happy and that it, for, it is fulfilling for both for you and for the person that you're interviewing, at least from my experience, it has been a great and fulfilling experience. So, um, you know, I, I really wish you a lot of success and blessings through this show. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this rate and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me Ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.